Hi, welcome to Arts in Indiana. I'm Amy Carroll, and I'm here today with Nancy Maxwell at the Art Sanctuary in Martinsville in her studio. Nancy, how long have you been an artist? I have been an artist most of my life, but uh, seriously painting probably the last 30 years. Wow, that's a long time. That's Ta great. Fantastic. Ta taught art in school before then. Uh, Where you know, did you teach? I taught here in Martinsville for most of my career, about 20 years. I uh, taught middle school art, which is a challenging venue, uh, but yes, lots, of fun, <laughs> lots of fun, lots of fun. And then decided it was time to get out and do my do my own work. You don't do much of that when you're teaching. So That's true. Yeah. So, so for 30 years, is that, is that all you've been doing is art as a profession? Right. That is that, yeah. And you teach classes here? I teach in classes here. I have a, kind of an open studio set up where people can come in, bring what they're wanting to work on, you know, and at all different levels of um, painting skills. Painting, for the most part, I do some drawing also uh, with students, adults mostly. But, um, and I've been here at Art Sanctuary about eight years. So eight wanna... year. And has that been since it's opened? Right. I was the first artist to move in. Um, when we first started, there was still a preschool on one of the floors, and um, a few of us moved in and, you know, went ahead and got set up and got started. and. And we've been here ever since. So. The Art Sanctuary in Martinsville is a great venue. They were a Methodist church that has been turned into an all art facility. Right, right. They have art um, functions as well as wedding and right. different yeah. venues that are events. Mm -hmm. And then they also have studios throughout the building as well as like, for example, Nancy teaches um, oil, painting oil painting and acrylic. Yes. Yes, and and drawing, yeah. and then and we do have space for larger workshops. If some uh, an outside instructor wants a place to hold a workshop, uh, we just finished a, a four day porcelain workshop this week, which was wonderful and well attended. And then followed that up with a one day drawing class, and and both were sold out. So um, it's a great it's a great space to use for workshops as well as it's a it's a good space for the individual artist. It, you know. It's a, we all function on our own schedules. We do a once a month open house, uh, second Friday of every month. The studios are open and the public's welcome to visit and occasionally we have a, a new show opening in our main gallery um, and for the rest of the time we kind of come and go and make our own schedules. I think it's amazing every time I come to Martinsville how art-centered and how much you can right. see that the community values right. art. Yes. And that's a great thing to know because when you think it about is. Martinsville, it's not really it, one of it, the things that comes to mind. Right, it doesn't. And we have a great um, downtown rediscover historic group that has uh, been able to, to secure a few grants. We've done some revitalization. We've got a very active um, Convention and Visitors Bureau group uh, that, that tries to drive you know the art tourism here. Um, we've got a couple grants coming up where we'll be painting the power boxes around town, you know, which is just a fun thing and it'll involve kids and artists of all ages. So will you be painting one? Uh, probably. I'll put a I'll put a bid in anyway. I'll okay. submit an idea. <laughs> now, whether or not I'm selected, that's another call, sure. you know. <laughs> that's one of that's just our job right, is to try right. for it. I'm gonna try for it, yeah. Yeah. So, so what are the favorite what are your some of your favorite things to paint? Yes. Um, I am a typical I'm not typical, but my le my work is uh, Indian landscapes. So I do enjoy starting as a plein air painting a lot of times. I, uh, you know, drive around the, the county, around the Midwest, and uh, start some paintings, um, tend to bring them back and finish them in the studio. But I'm just really drawn to, to landscape. I, I do some portrait in still life, but Landscape's my first love. I, you, you can't beat this area of the country for beautiful landscapes. You know, ex I was just going to say that, that so often we take for granted our mm -hmm. landscape, right. our beauty outside of just our windows. Right. And once you get out of the basic Midwest, just like maybe three or four states, you don't get that. And no. people are really, they, they seek out, especially Indiana artisans, right. Right. especially Indiana artisans that paint yeah. landscapes. And, and you know, right here where Martinsville is, it's kind of the, the glaciers push the, 
push the hills to here and it stops. So north, north you get a lot flatter ground and, yeah. and we're in that wonderful rolling hill area. And from here on, on south, we get just, just beautiful landscapes. So it's just I don't have stuff. to drive far. It's pretty stuff, that's right. <laughs> yeah, you, you have to look sometimes for something other than green in the summertime, but, but it's just, uh, yeah, it's great. Great it's something that we matter. take for granted and it we is. forget, and that's it a good is. thing to remind right. everyone. And I about. do travel some. I, I always take paints when I travel. I may only do a few studies, you know, a couple little little things, but um, it's it's fun. It's a challenge to paint in a different location because the color systems are different. Um, the greens are different. You, you go to Texas and you got you got mesquite limey greens, and in Indiana it's a different set of greens. And just to to learn to compensate for those color differences and, and atmosphere and sky differences. It's, it's fun, you know, it's just a nice, a nice challenge as a painter. And that's yeah. a wonderful thing to think about too. Aside from Indiana landscapes, are there any other inspirations that you have? Well, I do, um, I do a, lot of, a lot of reading, a lot of art history, you know, do try and study the, the, the Midwest painters, uh, the, the Brown County group, as well as um, just I just like art history, so I, you know, I, so you go back and you, you look at a Rembrandt and you try and, you try and do a face and do the shadows the way he would do it. And of course you're, you know, years of, years of skill away but from that. A, but, that yeah, but yeah, so, right. I mean, I do like that challenge of trying to imitate another artist. Um, it, it is a, a good skill building set. And um, there, yeah, this, that's a highly yeah. valued thing. I yeah. always learn whenever I go to an art museum. Right. That's why you see people set yeah. It, yeah. setting up Copying in an art museum. Famous painting works is, is, is a, a great, great education it is. It is. for an artist. And I don't do a lot of abstract, but I've started a series of uh, floral abstracts, taking common Indiana flowers, um, sunflowers, and, and petunias, and zinnias in the summertime, and, and creating a series of abstracts with that because that's out of my comfort zone. So uh, that's, you know, just a good, a good learning experience. Sure. So when you became, I always ask the question to artists, mm -hmm. what, when was it that you kind of went, oh, I'm an artist? I'm an artist. When did you feel right. the permission to call yourself I that? I love to draw and paint from an early age and I was really fortunate. My mother was a was a painter wannabe and didn't have the time due to due to economics and too many too many kids running around and you know jobs and things like that. Um, she she would have loved to have painted more, but what she did was allow me to go to a few lessons and sit quietly and watch her work with a with a very qualified teacher, a local uh, man or a, a Dutch man that moved to our community and named Antonius Ramacher, one of our claims to fame here. That's awesome. But um, she would let me go and sit if I was quiet, you know, and didn't didn't interrupt things. And I was fascinated by him. And I did that when I was like third, fourth grade. Um, I think I always knew I wanted to be an art teacher. I don't know that I thought of myself as an artist, but I knew I could teach. I knew I was going to be an art teacher. That was sort of a just, you know, was one of those lucky kids that knew, knew where I was going career-wise. And, and um, so, so pursued that first. Um, did, like I said, I taught about public, 20 years in the public school system. And um, then actually for some health reasons needed to retire from teaching. And then it was time to, to start doing my own Where my did own you work. get your teaching certification? I uh, got both my, my undergraduate and my master's from IU. Sorry, oh, pretty people. That's but. all right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so, I, so I have a, a bachelor's in art and a master's in, in art education and, and really enjoyed the job. I really love teaching. And I think that's why after I was out for a few years, I really needed to start teaching here again. And I... Um, I, I sort of run a studio with the idea that, that anybody can come in and improve. I've got in the same group uh, a lady that just started two weeks ago and a lady that's been with me 20 years. And that, uh, the conversation that results from what they're each doing, but the other one overhears along, along with other students in the group, I think is a very valuable learning tool. Um, it may not be what you're working on now, but you might hear, oh, oh that's that's what she was talking about when she said to do the, do the shadow this way or whatever. So I purposely run my studio without a specific end result. I don't like everybody coming in and we're all painting the same, you know, the same barn or whatever. Um, I don't think you learn as much about, um, about painting that you can transfer then to the next painting. You know, you might be able to do that one really well. But I think when you just start where you are and just we work on just building those skills, then then I think you go out of there with something that you feel like, oh, 
I can I can do that. So I'll try something a little more challenging next time. So your classes are probably a continuous mm -hmm. like they we're going to meet every week. And we meet every week. You're going to bring and, in a project. And right. We're going to find it. You know, or I'll help you find one. And right. all individually right. based. They are individual, and and that's very enjoyable for me as the teacher. And I think it benefits the students the most that way. So Absolutely. occasionally I'll do a, a six week drawing class, you know, just we're going to work on portraits or we're going to work on on still lifes or whatever, but with a, a specific goal in mind. But most of the time it's open ended. I've also I've often found that with students, that's one of the things that I've appreciated was when you can take that regular class mm -hmm. and kind of grow on your own speed, right. grow on your own level, you know, and absorb what's around right. you. And then, you know, take those little offshoot classes, those special, you know, mm -hmm. classes that can be, oh, we're going to work on hair, we're going to work on texture, right. or whatever it happens right. to be. And those are a great yeah. value. And that's a great thing for your community, I would imagine, being y able yes, to have yes. that I, access. You know, and there, some of them are people who really would never have thought that they could do it, um, would definitely not say they were an artist. And, you know, they, they come out in a few weeks going, well, that's not too bad, you know. <laughs> and and so, right. you know, it, it makes them realize that everybody can can do it to some degree and, and improve and, and enjoy it, which mm -hmm. is which is what I'm in there for. Um, and, and for the same reason I that you were talking about, I I tend to take, you know, workshops myself or do a do a class, a series of classes that, that improve a particular set of skills for myself. But I think when you teach, you are you learn so much more. You learn more from your students than they learn from you because you may know how to do that figure, that flower, or, or whatever it is, and, and you may you may be real good at it, and and you just can do it. But when you have to explain how you do it for someone else to understand it, you really have to think about your process. And and I think I, I'm all about process. That that to me is the the point of it. You know. So what, what I'm on, what I do now here more is I'm on the CVB. Um, and so what is the that's CVB? That's the Convention and Visitors Bureau. So. Okay. So every county has one, or most counties have one. In Indiana, they um, they take innkeepers tax if your county collects it, and they use it to promote tourism. So people will come back really? to the county, um, hopefully spend dollars stay overnight. So there's more money, and you know it's it's a cycle. But but I was appointed specifically to look at the art. Uh, of the side visiting of, uh, yeah, right. type and of why, it. Why and how and what's out there that we can say, you know, there's a rich artistic community here. Um, how can we promote tourism towards that slant? So, And that's a really interesting job. Um, I've been on that bureau a couple of years and it's, I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot about local politics um, and just how things function and how you go w forward with a budget and, you know, get approval from the commissioners and all those kinds of things that the average person doesn't deal with much. Right. Um, but I've also learned a lot about just marketing tools and um, how those things kind of run. But, so, and that's very. I think it's very true when you watch artists that live in smaller communities. Mm -hmm. Martinsville is much bigger mm -hmm. than Speedway in some ways. Um, but how integrated we become in the fabric right. of that community, just because it's such an iconic thing to see somebody's painting right, and that people right. kind of gravitate to that and it's mm -hmm. suddenly and then I think too the, the teaching background I too was a teacher and somehow those things I, I see that theme often mm -hmm. in our artists mm -hmm. where all of a sudden they're becoming so much more than just an artist in the community right. they're becoming a community builder they're bringing right. that to right. the community right. more than just the art. And our sanctuary has has uh, filled that role in a lot of ways. Um, the building is an independently owned but we are a 501c3. We, we function um, under the guise of our community foundation. So, so we're able to offer you know, workshops and, some, and, and receive grants um, to a certain extent um, to promote art in the community. And having a location, having a central location in a community the size of Martinsville um, has just done wonders for oh there there are artists here you know and and we've we have concerts and we have um, we had a mystery dinner theater um, that gave our local actors group a chance to to spread their wings a little bit mm -hmm. they hadn't done that type of thing before so this building itself has really um, done a lot for promoting the arts in our community and so that's been exciting to be to be a part of it on that side I, I serve on the board 
uh, sometimes I was for a while at the beginning for several years, taking a little a little stretch off the board now, but I'll, I'll go back on in a year or two, you know. It's just an amazing thing to me. Anytime we have a conversation with an artist, what else is there besides that one little thing of mm -hmm. putting the paint on the canvas and right. getting it out in front right. of people? There's often a thread there that has to do with community involvement mm -hmm. and community building yeah. and understanding of yeah. arts and thing and those are highly valuable skills that right. we forget that artists are doing more than just and, what it, and you it can't, is with the canvas. You know, you, you can't expect in a community this size that you're going to have a lot of walk-in traffic. This is a working studio for me. Um, occasionally, I someone comes in and I sell a painting and that's wonderful, but it, it's really my production spot to move things to other other venues, other shows, competitions, things like that. So I do get some traffic and being in a building with other artists that that uh, compounds that and that that helps everybody. But you know, just an individual artist with a with a little downtown storefront, it's hard to drive traffic there without being involved in the bigger community picture. You know, it just it just doesn't happen. How have you seen yourself grow being involved in an mm -hmm. art studio situation right. like this um, as an artist? Well, I think um, before, I mean, before I was, was active here, um, I, I was in a little shop downtown. And, and, you know, when you teach in your local school system, um, people already sort of know, oh, yeah, there's that lady and she's, she's an artist. She, my kids had her for school and so on and so forth. But, and so you, you, have a, you have a plus when it comes to recruiting students. If you want private students, they're going to they're gonna know you or their mom had you or whatever. Now I've got grand, you know, grandkids <laughs> and having it's getting scary. But, you don't have to tell uh, yourself. Yeah, right, it's but, okay. <laughs> um, but I think now I'm looked at in a much different light. I'm not just the lady who used to be the art teacher. Um, oh yeah, Nancy Maxwell, she's an artist. You know, she has a space. Um, I, I, another thing I do just to, to help self-promotion, but the community is I write a weekly column for our local paper and it features, you know, arts, culture, music, the local community players, um, that kind of thing. And I always get a few, a few points in there for Art Sanctuary every, every week or, or what I'm doing, you know, if I'm going to have, if I've got a piece of show. But I also talk about other artists in the area that maybe got into the Indiana Heritage Show or Hoosier Salon or they have a private show coming up. And, and so I think people are realizing that there are, um, you know, there are artists here. There are real honest to goodness artists here. And, and I'm included in that. They see me as a working artist. Not just um, the art teacher. Not just yes. the art teacher, you know, and oh yeah, she's got a studio and, the, and I, get, I get people in to visit now. You know, well, I, I was in last week and I thought I'd bring my relatives back that are in town for a visit, that kind of thing. And you know, part of it is just uh, shameless self-promotion and part of it is <laughs> the community as a whole helps develop that, um, you know, that idea that we do have artists here. And so, you know, that that has changed the way I'm perceived, I think, in the community. I know you're also involved in the Brown right. County Art Museum. Right. Uh, what kind, what did, did your love of the history of arts drive you there? Is yeah. that what kind of brought you over there? You know, the Brown County artists, I mean, there's a group of them that were the, the Brown County artists, probably T.C. Steele is the most well-known, the one that, that people can think of the name, but there were four or five who started coming down in the summers, and most of them end up teaching, being teachers at Heron at one time or other during their during their time in Indiana. And I've always loved their work. Um, there are two historic galleries in Brown County. Um, Brown County Art Gallery, which is the one that I'm a part of, um, has a great historic collection and also an active current artist association. As does the the Art Guild in Brown County. Both both fantastic places. But um, it's a it's a tough. Um, spot to be, we, you have to jury in so you mm -hmm. can't just go say oh I want to put paintings in there so uh, if you get rejected a couple times for things like that you realize the the solution is just to paint more and um, you know to work harder to get your work up to the level that that you want it to be and that they're expecting so when I did get juried in over there um, I tend to like to be involved in the the backstory of an organization and, and um, be out there you know whining and dining and helping people and doing doing the um, the publicity part of it that um, maybe it's the old school teacher being in front of the classroom I don't know but um, I quickly got involved in the uh, on the board over there and I currently serve as the membership chair which means those people that want to become a member like I did I've been in there about 10 years now um, go through the jury process and I help them figure out what you know what they need to do to to get their work in there and be juried in and I I enjoy that connection um, it's a it's a great gallery like I said it just did a major expansion last year so 
now we're able to pull in lots of uh, special artists, special shows. We've got, uh, right now there's one called Brown County Goes Coastal because those Brown County artists um, that, that started coming in the summers, some summers they would go like to Cape Ann and Providence and they, there was a whole group of They'd them that painted. they the country, yes. Right, and they painted, you know, they it painted. It was a large the, colony right, too. Right, it was a large time. colony. Yeah. And um, so there's a whole group of paintings that are by those artists but are not the Midwest genre. And so we, right now we have a, a display of that on it, which is, which is just a great, uh, a great collection in the gallery over there. So um, I, I stay involved over there too. It kind of pushes you to keep, keep producing, but it also helps you know what's going on, what, what other opportunities might be out there. Um, Keeps you stirring the politics Exactly, the stirring, that's right, <laughs> stirring the politics. You don't want to let things settle, you know, and, and it also challenges me, you know, the, the artwork over there is fantastic. And I, you know, every time I walk in, I think, wow, I am, I am lucky to be makes included. You proud. It, it does, makes, makes me proud, proud to be, to have my work hanging with a lot of those other people. So um, it, it's nice to be involved over there Absolutely. too. Absolutely, and congratulations yeah, for being you. That's thank a great you. thing. Yeah. yeah. What were some of, we are lucky enough to have your artwork at the Speedway Center for the Arts currently and through August 21st, I think, yes, yes. Yeah. And um, you paint mainly in oils. Right. Do you have any as well, do you do acrylics? I do some acrylic, you know, it's a it's a quick cleanup. Um, I'm more apt though, uh, oils are a richer, a richer foundation. I think you can layer and get a nice buildup of colors more so. Um, you know, but there's a convenience factor when you're when you're traveling or when you're out. So I sometimes use the, use the water mixable oils, which have um, they've come a long way in terms of quality in the last ten years. And and basically, what that means is that instead of an oil base, right. they are the same type of paint, mm -hmm. only you're mixed with just with water. Regular you don't water. need turpentine or mineral spirits so to clean, clean up, up a little and, bit better. And they, don't, they don't have the odor that some people find a little offensive. And um, you know, if you're working with kids you just feel like it's a little safer medium. Um, so nice I, I do a little bit of, of acrylic. I'll do a little a little bit of watercolor too as just studies, you know, a quick little, I, I keep my car packed uh, probably April, March to November with hmm. oils, watercolors. Are you saying as an artist you have more than one type of paint? Oh, oh <laughs> my goodness, my goodness. And I have a car that is just my art car. We don't, we don't ever get to use it for anything else. But um, so, you know, I keep watercolor in there and if, it's, if I know it's just a 20 minute, you know, I got 20 minutes and that's just a really neat looking something over there. I'll, I'll do a watercolor rather than get out Everything the oils, out. you know, because it it's such a quick dry. It, it, yeah, right. So, but oil is my first love. I, I just think um, the, the benefits of painting in oil certainly outweigh for me and for my skill set outweigh you know acrylics acrylics and watercolor for the speedway show i think um and it's called nostalgic impressions nostalgic impressions um and i'm i'm real excited to have my work there it's it's funny you you have the paintings in your studio all of those things sat in my studio at least a few days a couple were finished just the day before right. they went up there but um you know you see them on the walls in in sort of your usual space and then to transport them and have them hung as a show is, is a big difference. Um, mm -hmm. It's one of the reasons we do the student show here, the, the um, every year marches Student Art Month nationwide. Okay. And our, our school system, um, the Martinsville School System is the larger one in the county. And we offer our space, our galleries here and, and hallways, sometimes they run over to the hallways. We offer them um, the opportunity to put their student show here. The uh, effect of coming in as a, eight-year-old with this painting that you thought was pretty cool, but now it's hanging in a gallery. Absolutely. It's just so exciting. And and for me, having my work hanging at, at Speedway is kind of that same like wow moment, you know, because it's a collection. Hopefully you've developed, well, although maybe not a, a cohesive theme throughout, but you know, I work with a certain palette of colors, a certain, my, my paintings tend to be fairly warm. Um, I frame a lot of times in gold because I do use use warmer colors rather than cooler colors. And so, you know, you, you look at it as a body of work and, and your favorites, you know, you pick out what you think's the best that's gonna go up there. And, um, you know, then you see it all together as that collection. And with, with one exception, there's one pen and ink up there because I really like doing pen and ink. Um, it's it's just a nice a nice way to do little little drawings. So there is one pen and ink in the show, but the rest are all oils, and most of them are Midwest paintings. Um, there are a few. I I was in Texas for um, a workshop a couple years ago, and there are a couple pieces from from my Texas series um, that are 
you know, that I included. But, and I would um, assume that the name Nostalgic Impressions kind of has to do tie in with what you were just talking about, right. that you love that history. Right. right. It's kind of building that history and, I, and the love of what you have yeah. in your life yeah. together. And I, I take scenes, pictures, images that um, probably for the average person in this area has a little bit of a draw, a pull, at least a familiarity. Um, you know, maybe it's an old bridge and they remember a bridge when they were a kid. They used to sit there with their friend fishing or grandpa. Actually, that's or the one I get oh. asked about. I've already been asked by a couple of people about the bridge. The and bridge. I'm like, I don't know where that bridge right. is, but right. I, where are you yeah. thinking it could be? <laughs> so hopefully, you know, that brings back a little bit of sentiment to them and interests them enough to, you know, to stop for a, a few minutes. I said, you know, painting's a solitary um, activity, but. You, you are hoping to draw an audience in, you know, and so if you get a person to pause for just, you know, a couple of seconds or longer, you know, 10 minutes, they stand there and they can put their own uh, feeling into that story or maybe that becomes their story, you know, oh yeah, I used to play in a barn like that or, you know, we went down that road or, or whatever. I think that's, that's where you, you bridge that gap, you know, you're not just painting um, something. I mean, I always paint things I enjoy. I think it's hard to paint for other people. You have to like the subject and you have to find a, a point that, you know, that draws you in in the first place. But then if you can get another person pulled into that, and that's when the painting's successful. It sounds know? like to me is sometimes traditional art, and I don't use that as a bad term, I love it, uh, sometimes gets knocked because mm -hmm. everybody goes, well, mm -hmm. what's new about right. that? And I right. think to me, and what you were saying is, it's not so much that it's just a fresh and new and different and clever idea. It's that what it should trigger to the viewer is a nostalgic impression and right. memory of some right. kind of thing. It could be from a few weeks ago. It could be as a right. kid, whatever you're just talking mm -hmm. about. Those are the things that I value right. a lot in art, especially yeah. what we have dubbed an, in, in a very conventional way, traditional, traditional art. art. And yeah, I, I think, you I, know, I'm everything's, very proud of, yeah. everything's been painted. You know, right. you're not going to find, I mean, it, it may be a different face, but basically every subject in the world's been painted. Mm -hmm. the, you know, we have traveled, traversed the world and, and every bridge and every, there's you know, nothing there's nothing new. Nothing new. Come up with so what you much. have to do is to, is to find what excites you as the painter. You know, what, what is it that pulls you in? Sometimes it's just the way the sun's hitting a particular branch or it's, um, you know, it's the purple in the shadow or just, you know, you don't know till you see it and then you know it when you see it and, and it pulls you in as the painter and, you know, and, you know, not all paintings are successful. What, sometimes what I see and what is in my head as a painting, I, I don't get it down on canvas the way I want it, you know, and, and then that's, that's kind of frustrating sure. and you either rework it or toss it and start again or whatever. But, um, you know, you have something in your head that you try to put on canvas for whatever reason, something grabbed you in the beginning, and then, and then hopefully, it may not be even the same thing. It may be, may not be the part of the painting that really drew you in that draws somebody else, but that there's something there, mm -hmm. that you know, in, yeah, that is a, it is a bit of nostalgia for them. So, absolutely, right. What's your favorite painting in the gallery mm -hmm. currently, and why? Oh golly, um, you know, there's a big piece when you come in the door. They, they all have stories to me. Sure. Um, there's a big piece when you come in the door that is just a, a hilltop view. It's just fall. The trees are lovely. It's the, it's Midwest. It's it's fields that have just been cut. You know, it's got all the all the colors that we love about Indiana in the fall. And and it's it's one of my favorites. Partly, it is a view down my driveway. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, you know, I can look at that and I can I can I can be home. I can uh, uh, appreciate the. I'm very fortunate that I live out in the country and I have some, some lovely impressions. But then there's this one over here on the right that's got flower pots and a, and a robin. And I wouldn't say it's my strongest painting, but it was, it was a fun, an event that's a memory to me. It was, I was a great moment. Right. I was taking a workshop with a, a gal whose work was great and, and she was doing a good job teaching, but I would just, I kind of got lost with what was going on with the class. And she's over here demonstrating and we're sort of supposed to be doing this. And this bird is just chirping at me. You know, it's like, look over here. Well, he was draw she was drawing me away from her nest, I'm sure. But so she's sitting on this uh, batch of flower pots. It was in New Harmony, which I, I love to oh, paint yeah. in New Harmony in the spring. And so that's just, that was just a fun memory for me. You know, mm -hmm. so a lot of them are, are like that. Um, I don't know. There are several favorites in that in that show. There's one with a couple of burrows that I painted 
at a workshop in Texas, and every evening these little miniature burrows would kind of wind their way through, going back <laughs> to wherever. And the, the colors were different. Um, the, the purples and oranges in the skies there are just different than here. And those little guys were just cute every evening, you know. So you try and you try and get into that moment and, and paint what you remember. So um, I think they're all my favorites. I'm, I don't. I Wonderful. Can't. They always are. They <laughs> right, always are. Right. It's like yeah. children. Yeah. You can't it's pick right. one. You can't pick a favorite when it's right There's now. That's the about favorite. That. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned that sometimes you keep your car packed yes. with yes. art supplies for at the moment. <laughs> for the moment. For the, for the, the one um, you don't, that can't get away. Walk you know? us through a little bit of the process that if you see something and you want to kind of pull right. off to the side of the road, what right. do you kind of start with? How do you start that process you know, of the, creating a the piece? The temptation is just to get out the paints and jump in there and paint it. And once in a while that might work. And it probably does for some people. Um, you know, you, you see this great old barn or the cow or whatever, and, and you just want to paint that right then. But I have learned over the years that for me, the process for a successful painting really needs to start with a value study, with a, a just a black Sharpie and white paper, um, a, a quick little, you know, three by four sketch where I'm looking at, at how the darks and lights play, because I do try to uh, have a a strong contrast in my paintings of darks and lights. I think that's a draw for me personally. I think for the viewer that's a draw if you've got those real strong lights and shadows. So I I do a couple of little sketches first. I might I might try it, you know, does it go this way? Does it go this way? Do I want to leave that tree in? Do I want to move it over? Kind of get the logistics down. Just just a couple little sketches. And then I will um, working out I don't ever work very large. Um, I have learned that I'm pretty slow as a plein air painter. I love starting that way, but I don't tackle too big of a canvas. 12 by 16 is about um, my my size for outside. Um, I'll do bigger. I like to do big pieces, but I'll bring I'll bring them back and you know and do a bigger piece here. So um, uh, then I'll do that. I'll transfer that sketch just to just a basic outline, just a, a real rough road map of where I need to to go with that, and then block in my darks with um, just some some dirty, watery, ugly, thin paint, you know. If a picture does not work as a, as a black and white abstract, as just shapes, um, it doesn't it's matter. It's probably not gonna have a basis no, that it, you right. can work it, on. It's, you know, it doesn't matter what colors you put in there, how nice your brush work is, what the subject is, it's not gonna be too impressive. So, you know, I've learned to, to get that little study done and then look at it from all, all directions, turn it upside down, see if it's interesting and then uh, start start layering in the color. And frequently I'll get most of it done outside if it's, like I said, if it's not much uh, bigger than 12 by 16 or so, um, and then come back and, and finish up the details. Um, there are a lot of artists who, who work entirely outside and they do it in one setting, but I have learned over the years that that's, that's just not my strong suit. It's wonderful to start out and it's a real challenge painting uh, plein air because you don't have a lot of time before lights change, shadows change. You've got a couple of hours to really nail the scene that attracted you um, before it, it changes so much that it's not the same scene, you know. And and so then I do you always, ever snap a photo? I do. Or anything uh, yeah, like that? I take I take quite a, a number of photos, photo. and I usually will take you know the scene I'm doing, and then two or three steps to the side. So. Oh gosh, what what if I just needed a little more? What was there? That's a good. I hint, mean, you yeah. can always you can always wing it and put something in that wasn't. But oftentimes the thing that you really saw, you know, there there might have been something just off camera that that is good. So I I tend to do it's a panorama kind effects. of thing. What right. did you miss just off? The right, case. exactly. <laughs> so yeah, and and I work from you know work from photographs frequently in here to finish things. Um, and I think that for the viewer that may not know, plain air is painting in the environment right. when you're in the environment. Right. So you go out into a field, mm -hmm. you paint the field that's in front of right. you. Um, yeah. And then I know often with like bigger, big artists like Aspavig even, you'll see several paintings of the same subject right. matter. One might be that he went into the field, painted it, took some photos. Mm -hmm. Then there might be another one where um, they came back into the, he came back into mm -hmm. the studio. He repainted again the same scene, only right. maybe there were more details because you can right. put more Pull into up. it. Yeah. And you can see maybe sometimes a series of the same, yeah. same, work, same place, mm -hmm. just different paintings. Yeah. And so that's a very common. Yeah. And it's fun um, to do a series. I mean, I think it's, I think it's attractive to the viewer to, to be looking at generally the same subject matter, the same scene, and, and do, you know, three or four of, of the same place, but, but a little bit different. It might even be, 
like Monet that you painted at different times during the day, Absolutely. which is a great challenge, you know, to, to stand there and do it in the morning and the midday and so on. Or it might just be a slightly different view of the same, the same general location. And I think, I think that's a real learning experience for the artist. It certainly is for me at least. And I think for the viewer, it's, it's interesting, you know, it gives them a, a, a feel of what was really there. Mm -hmm. So. About the art sanctuary, the Martinsville Art Sanctuary, mm -hmm. you've been in place for about eight about years. About eight years, right. And how yeah. many artists do you have here? What's the range of art? Right. Art? Um, we have space for about 20 to 22 artists. There are artists that, that share, share studio space um, at any given time. We have one empty space right now. So we're... That's we're, great. Uh, yeah, it's great. It's great. And we, we rarely have more than that. Um, sometimes we're full and we have a waiting list, but we have... Um, a couple of other painters in the building. One's a real abstract painter. Um, one is a more traditional painter like myself. Um, we have a couple of potters and jewelers, a stained glass artist, a pastel, pastel artist. Um, you even have like fabric artists right. at some time. My, my mother-in-law shares my studio and uh, she's a rug weaver and mm -hmm. she's been weaving for 30 years and still comes and weaves. And, and she's uh, can we Nine, she's she? 93, 93, yes, and, and you would, I tease people, I said she loves talking about weaving and so on a second Friday, if you're here for the, that's, she only comes limited amounts because she doesn't drive anymore. But I said, she can be over there explaining about weaving and her loom, which is as old as she is. It's a little older, I think. But and I said, there could be a fire in my side because she's such a showman that people would just, they would just stand there and keep watching. And I'd be like, hey, 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 you know, <laughs> over here. But, yeah, but so, yeah, so we have, um, we have a good website. If anybody wants to check out the Art Sanctuary, it's artsanctuaryindiana.com. And uh, we're available for, you know, special events. If an outside art group needs a place to do a show, we've hosted the Indiana Wildlife Painters. We've hosted the, um, the you Wabash have a great Valley. gallery space. We do. You we have, really we do. actually have two gallery spaces it's very that are available. Large. Right. Okay. The, I, yeah. I'm, I only know yeah. the one. We have two, two levels of that oh, gallery. Okay. So, um, you know, we have outside groups that come in and do do shows periodically. And then we there are two or three shows a year that we will do. The next one that we have here um, is tied in with the Bicentennial and um, we're doing an Images of Morgan County show which um, Ellen Pruitt and I are curating and um, it will be a lot of artwork from current artists but there'll be some old photographs and some you know some cane chairs from Old Hickory which was a, a Martinsville institution years and years ago um, and and then some maps of where these you know where that particular picture was and what the person remembers about it so that'll be our next show coming up in September and we're excited about about that show but yeah it's great to work in this facility with um, you know, I get stuck on a painting and I go down the down the hallway and say, hey, look at this. What what why is this bugging me? And what you know, what should I do about it? So I think there's a benefit to being to being in a facility Absolutely. with other artists. So Absolutely. we have a nice a nice assortment of of people and personalities and age range from about 22 to 93. So <laughs> um, and everything in between every. every and you mentioned Ellen Wilson yes. Pruitt, who she's I have to give her kudos. Sure. She's a well known China painter. So yeah. I, I, I said she's the, one of the best painting, yeah. portrait artists. Uh, yes. You know, she works exclusively in porcelain, but her portraits are just just incredible. Just they incredible. are. I just think um, it's great to be here at the Art Sanctuary. Thank you for well, having us over here. Well, we're glad to have you, and uh, you know we love showing the place off. You know, please come down come anytime. Down. Come visit the Second Art Sanctuary. Second Friday of the month. There are always it's always open, a great little right, like open, open studio house night. Or studios mm -hmm. are right, open. People right. can wander around, and yeah. you usually have like a little snacky we thing. We have snack in some stuff, of the rooms. and and generally, and, and you know, we'll have a special show going Even on. Even if there's and not so, a gallery yeah, show, it's yeah, fun we're to still come open. Look. Right. It's it's always fun to go and look at inside the studio of any artist. You know, you get ideas you get thoughts you get a better yeah, inside of what's going right. on right and how they how they occur. work what their process is i think that's that's fun for for everybody to to look at yeah thank you so much for having us as a guest at the martinsville art sanctuary in nancy maxwell's studio you can also view nancy's work at the speedway center for the arts in right on main street and speedway in your neighborhood until august 21st so come on down and visit us